All right, I don't think there's anything else we need. I think we can just start this Norway trip. All right, I'm gonna make a beeline for the 34 meter hole. And I am hoping to, I can't remember exactly what lures they give us, but I'm hoping they give us the small red um, lure. And I'll probably just start with that one. Just trying to see. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine that there's anything that's like going on at Norway that would be different than than what you would typically say is the most important. So I'm, what I'm hoping is that we get the Bond 7005 and then we might also try the 12505. I think we get both of those if I remember correctly. That is a really big um, lump fish on a red maggot. And that's at 80. Imagine going out and fishing 80 with just a red maggot on. That's pretty cool. All right, 34. Looks like they're catching fish at 34. I'm guessing that's what we want to do. This is kind of cool. This person was just fishing right outside of town and they're catching eel pouts and stuff, but they've got a fully loaded setup with drop shots and everything. Yeah, I think 34 is the start point, right? It's just the best bite rate, I would imagine. Twenty four dinks at the bucket. Yo, what's up, Mystic? Yeah, Blunty, I might um after we do, you know, at least half this Norway trip, uh I might switch over to copper on my main. We'll see. The other thing we've got is like and I'll just I mean we'll we'll see what time it releases and how much interest there is. I was just curious if later in the stream do we want to at least check out the the uh fishing planet ocean stuff I don't know I don't even know like I can't even find any information about like what time that's releasing so it may be so late in the day that it's not um... I've also been a little tempted if I'm honest is is uh, trying that new hunting reserve once it comes out but that's not till June 18th so we don't have to worry about that today wait it's already out are you sure Yo, what's up, Jane? I uh, I just don't understand. Like, does it come out on Steam later than somewhere else or something? It's already live, really. All right, let me look. Oh man. Look at this trophy quarry char somebody posted about. That's amazing. Today at 8.56, somebody says, Fishing Planet update went live, and good luck with today's stream. Hmm. I mean, okay. Let me just check something real quick. Well, let me just check something because technically we're, I probably will not include this in the, um, oh, it just, it just went live y'all. All right. So again, this is an option for later. If we want to, uh, if we want to look at it, let me see how much these packs cost though. All right. One of them is 40. That's a pretty standard price. Plus it comes with the boat, ton of gear. And it looks like you get 30 days. And then what's this other one? The other one is 60. Oh, is this a nicer boat? What's the difference in the two boats? A fishing yacht. I think it... Uh, let's see. 
I want to say that it might have to do with how many people can come on the boat with you, but let me double check this. Yo, what's up, Addy? Oh, that's cool. They've got a new splash tag with the uh, Japanese stuff on it in the ocean, dolphins jumping. Hopefully we're not catching dolphins. Did we just get a sub? Yo, Boog, thanks for the sub. No way. What is up with 20 gifted subs? Are you serious? Like, who are you? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I was like really tempted to make a joke about it looks like my mom made a new Twitch account, but that's not true, but I do want to know more. Yo, thank you so much. It's so many, I can't even read off all the people's names that got a gifted sub just now. Yo, Boog, thank you so much. Really, seriously, I, I very much appreciate it. I'm stuck in an eternal loading screen on Fishing Planet right now, but... I'm going to try to exit out really quick. I was not meaning to like actually start it up. I was just trying to see if the uh, DLC was live, but I was able to find that out elsewhere. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I mean, looking at this, the $60 versus the $40 boat, I feel like there was a difference. Maximum seats three. Rod holders six. There's six rod holders. It looks like the cheaper one is better, actually. Oh no, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, that's the difference. So you've got three seats versus four seats, six rod holders versus eight rod holders. So not that it matters right now, but just letting you know that's what I've discovered. And it does look like that that is live. Okay, this would be a perfect time to start our trip. All right. Uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, Boog, thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to um, the number one spot on the supporter list with your 20 gifted subs. And we went from 49 to 69. Already we're at the highest number ever and we've just blown it out of the water. Okay, so everyone, uh, we are now at a point where we are saying hello to YouTube. I was around when you first started streaming. I'm back playing now and you deserve it. Oh, thank you. So when I first started streaming RF4, is that what you mean? Well, welcome back to RF4. And uh, again, thank you very much. Okay, so hello to YouTube. So this is where we'll start the start the cut or right, right about here on, um, on, the, uh, on the leveling experience. So we are on our Cozy Dog account and we're going to take our first trip to Norway. Um, quickly, I'll just summarize. We had a discussion a few minutes ago about do you ever start before your first trip? Do you ever craft Navragrad spoons up to, up to 10% so you can make foam rubber fish? Foam rubber fish are that good on the trip, but it's an easy decision as I've thought about it because it would probably cost a couple hundred silver. And I think it's an easy decision that that's something you do before your second trip if you're in this position because we don't even have jig, uh, marine jigs unlocked yet. And so we can't even use them and we may unlock them during this trip. We may not, I don't know how many percentage points we'll get. So that would be something we'll probably do before our second Norway trip, not before our first. 
All right, let's take the first trip though. Here we go, Norwegian sea trip. We get five in-game days. We're just gonna make a beeline for um, the 34 meter hole and uh, hope we have a good a good uh, first couple hours on the Norwegian Sea. Um, yeah, let's see really quick. So the nice thing about this trip is you don't have to purchase a um, you don't have to purchase boat tickets. You get all the lures already. Oh yes, yeah, down here. I'm just realizing I'm pretty low on food, and I don't want to um, burn through all of our tea unnecessarily. All right, here's the grocery store. So we will just get some additional carrots real quick. All right, let's get out there. Does free to play happy hour work differently than premium? Um, no, it works the same. It's just the, the event is over for all of the free premium or free happy hours. All right, so let's get our gear ready. We have the Saltmaster Offshore 88. Uh, five hour stream. We may do a five hour stream, but we're not going to do this whole trip. Oh, we don't get the smaller bonds. Is this a mistake, chat? Not getting the smaller bond? How much would it cost? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. We're just going to fish with what we have. We also do have the lurker. But I was really thinking they gave you the smaller size bond. I guess not. Yeah, we may do a five hour stream, but we're probably only going to do two, two and a half hours of this trip. And then I'll switch to um, my main account. And then there's some talk. I don't know what to think about it. There's some talk about maybe at the end of the stream, do we check out the, the ocean fishing on Fishing Planet a little bit? Miki, how's it going? All right, so we're just driving the boat straight to 34, and we're gonna use the equipment they gave us. I do have that lurker, the blue lurker, uh, in case we wanna switch to that at some point, but I'm just planning on starting off with these bonds. The nice thing about the smaller red bond, we could have probably had a maybe a little faster bite rate and caught small fish, uh, like real small fish. Not that this one won't occasionally catch sar you know, a mackerel or whatever, but I was at least hoping we would have a small one to try, but it's fine. I mean, if, if we want to, we can always get it for the second half of this trip or something. They're, um, I think they're around 50 silver, but I could be wrong. And since we don't have premium, I'm assuming we cannot call the submarine. Surprised it even gives us the option, but I guess it just will tell us that we can't call it. All right, so copper's still doing well today, it sounds like. Bucket spot still winning. A winning play. Wow, this top, uh, this top post on di on uh, VK right now, that is so many rare carp, uh, koi. Now it looks like it's over a long period of time, but man, I might have to try that. Uh, later on, that looks great. Have you seen that, Blunty? Wow. All right, are we here yet? We're almost here. 
So we're 14, almost 15. We will probably cruise into level 20, I would think. As long as we have a, a somewhat reasonable bite rate, I would imagine we'll hit level 20 just in these two and a half hours. I could be wrong, but I feel like last time I did that, that was pretty quick to level 20 is what I remember. Okay, so here we go. Let's get it going. We've done almost no spin fishing on this account. Um, so, like I said, we don't have jigging unlocked. And I'm going to be really curious, like, in two and a half hours and then ultimately in the full five-hour trip, like, what level can we get to in sea fishing? Sorry, in marine fishing. So we're just letting it hit the bottom here at 34 meter hole, and then we're right clicking for perking. You can also hit shift right click to get a little bit of a stronger perk. Yo, what's up, Renzi? We're starting with this lure. If this is slow, we'll mix it up. Sometimes I find, um, I feel like we've got that perking bug where it just looks like we're struggling to lift the, the rod up. but we'll try to clear it in a minute. Yo, Av, welcome back. Avi, Av. <clears throat> Eliu just caught a trophy Atlantic Sori. It's funny to be in like, uh, you know, actual regular game chat. The problem is if I try to switch to our normal chat, it will potentially kick me from the game. Yo, Weekend FM, how's it going? Oh, Renzi, I, I agree. Today's the day you get it. There's another trophy, sorry. I mean, you're welcome to kind of watch me for a few minutes before you start yours, unless you've already started the trip. Just because I'm trying to figure out what's working right now out of these starter lures. The first one I'm trying seems pretty slow, the Bond 05. But I do have to remember the bite rate in general is just going to be a lot slower than what I'm used to on my main account because we don't have all of the skill points in marine fishing we don't have all of the percent of, of marine fishing and we also um don't have all of the drop shot and attractants and stuff unlocked yet but this is really slow um so far so i'm actually going to pull this up and and um recast a different lure this is slow enough that I want to recast something. You know, and something I didn't think about, but before we take our second Norway trip, this is kind of like the same thing with the copper trip, right? We took the first copper trip, had that experience, and realized some things we want to do before the next copper trip, which was mainly level up our bottom fishing to where we can use boilies, carp boilies. Well, one thing I'm remembering with this before our next um, trip to Norway, I definitely want to level up bait harvesting to the point where we can uh, do filet of safe. Because it does, I think, help the bite rate a little bit once you're able to start cutting up safe and mackerel and attach those to your rigs. If I start, I can get off for a day and get back into it. Yeah, it'll pause when you log out. You just don't want to do that too much because it takes time to get back out here. All right, let's move to the red dapper. No, let's move to the white dapper pilk. Let's do with, let's just go with something that I know typically works really well. So now we're trying the dapper pilk. Before we were using the Bond 12505, which should be a good lure out here. But I just wasn't getting a bite, and I feel like that's a pretty, you know, that's a long enough time. We don't want to wait any longer than that. So.
17 hours. Oh, I never saw how long it was, Blunty. But yeah, that post is wild. Usually put on the strips, but you don't feel like it makes a, b a big difference. Hmm. Yes, I am in a trip. This is a low level account, level 14. I'm in a trip right now, trying out some of these basic lures that they give you. One thing I did do is we'll just leave this in the bottom layer for a second. One thing I did do, just so you know, is I purchased the Lurker 107 before coming. So I'll also test that lure. That's just a really good lure, but it doesn't come with the trip. So you would have to purchase that before, either before starting your trip or once you get here, if that ends up being a really good lure. All right, let's just let this sit in the bottom layer for a second. I don't know what's going on, but I can't catch a fish right now. We probably just need to keep trying different lures till we find the right one. How much is that? I don't remember. Chat, does anybody know how much a lurker costs? I feel like we're snake bitten right now. We can't catch a fish. All right, I'm gonna switch colors again. About a hundred silver. That sounds right. A little less than a little less than a hundred. All right, let's think about this. Well, let's try the lurker one time. Uh, try blue. Okay, I'll try blue. Well, I guess I am trying blue with the lurker, but I'll try blue with the other one too. Um, I need to also see if I can get this daggum. I, I could be wrong, but I feel like I've got this perking bug and it really messes with my brain a little bit. Uh, the three-aught cropping. I would use the three-aught jig. In fact, it's the very one that I purchased. The fisheye three-aught number three. That's what I would recommend. The bucket spot is hot, hot, hot. I also want to try that other spot. That other spot looks like there's some, some really amazing koi coming out. Seven in an hour. All right, I might start with bucket then. How much money could you make in a trip? It looks like right now you might not make any money, but maybe that's just me. Uh, but people typically make what, like, holy cow, guys, I can't even catch a fish with the lurker. People typically make, I don't know. I mean, if you pay for the trip with gold, all right, we'll try the 04, Bond 04. Also, let me see if I can fix this. Maybe that's just the way this rod works. I don't know. might be a little too amped up. We might just need to let it sit a little longer. If we need to, we can go try the 41 meter bank. If 34 is just uh, not playing nice for me right now.
Why is the cold stream cheaper at copper than Volkov? That, that, that doesn't make sense. The 1003, you talking about the lurker? Well, just one thing to remember, and this is like, Blunty has reminded me of this before, uh, in, after I did one of my videos. Like the difference in fishing on a higher level account when you've actually got points in, in marine fishing, first of all, just that makes a huge difference. Plus, if you add on fillets, if you add on any attraction elements, that makes a huge difference. And then, on top of that, when you add on the drop shots and all that, this is crazy though. Yeah, I don't know, Dan. I've not seen something that's more expensive at Volkov than Norway. Hmm. How much of a difference is it? Yeah, than anywhere. That's right, Blunty. Poseidon cursed you? Do I need to re-log or something? Is this a port issue? Wink, wink. It'd be such a good experience fishing something else. Just bream, holy cow, I fell asleep and we caught a fish. Uh, okay. I think it's about 300 silver. Difference? Okay. We caught our first fish. It's not worth anything, but we did catch our first fish. Uh, do we just stick with this one or do we keep searching? Let's try the O1. Ooh, we're drifted like almost all the way off. And you're pretty sure you didn't like misread the price at one of the locations? We finally got it. Okay, good. 41 is very active. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I might should move. <laughs> Nothing about what I'm doing right now feels very active. Uh, so. Isn't it interesting? Oh, maybe it didn't change it. Maybe it's just the way this rod works. Isn't it interesting how... When you don't have any of the attractant stuff on the rod, it literally sinks so fast. But I think that also means we're a lot less likely to catch the fish on the drop. Because it's just cruising down. Um, not from the boat. Well, I shouldn't say not from the boat. You can only fish with one rod at a time on the boat. So chances are you would not want to use feeders on the sea. You'll want to use the gear that comes with the trip, which is what I'm using now. However, if you want to shore fish, you can fish with feeders using some of the baits that you can buy here, like the shrimp and stuff like that. And that can be okay I just don't think you're going to do as good on that as you would if you were just truly out here sea fishing. Although, based on my current experiences, that might not be true. All right, so our first safe. All right. So 4.38 safe. 
We barely got any XP for that. I mean, like, we were almost 15 already, and it barely pushed us past 15. So, me saying that we were going to hit 20 in this first part of the trip is probably uh, crazy, unless we just hit a really a nice couple of fish. Okay. Now that we've caught a couple fish, it's a little later in the day. I'm feeling a little braver, like maybe we need to switch back to some of the other lures that I assumed would work really good and just ended up not working. I'm at 34 bank right now. All right, so here's another fish. Oh, we're big time in it with a red, red king crab. That's actually, all right, I'll keep this lure on a little bit longer. That's a nice fish. It's small, but that's a nice fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a new account. This is a leveling experience account. Well, if other lures don't end up feeling like they're working very good, at least we know this one is doing a little bit of work. So we can always rotate back to this one as needed. And if you're wondering, this is the bond 12501. I'm gonna try the lurker again. I, I tried it. I, honestly, I just wasn't catching fish on any of the lures that I expected to catch fish on. But yeah, I'm going to try Lurker again. Uh, so, Avi says, how much can I level up from a trip? I'm level 15. I mean, it just depends on how much fish you catch and what fish you catch. I would have said before that a five-hour trip, if you're level 15, a five-hour trip, you'll probably be like level 20 at the end of it or thereabouts. But we're starting off so slow here. I'm not sure about that anymore. That seems like not realistic at the moment. At least based on what I'm experiencing right now. All right, let's try the lurker again. Let's try the lurker once again. Oh, spiny dogfish. Love to see that. All right, so this lure is catching some really cool fish. But we're going to switch to the lurker 100, 107 again. Look how little my XP bar is moving up with these fish, though. I mean, I know these aren't like the biggest fish like the difference in that versus if we had caught a three kilo spiny dogfish or a two kilo red king i mean i don't know but oh we got something on the drop thank you lurker all right i mean even if the fish aren't worth anything if it's that fast a bite rate that's what we want i know it won't always be since we don't have attractants and stuff but we would hope that sometimes it would be that quick of a bite rate because that's how we're going to level up our sea fishing and get to where we can use jigging rigs, which especially at night seems like that could be really important. Yeah, I have good luck with the red lurker as well, as well as the white one. But I didn't want to bring multiple lurkers, so I just went with the safe blue option. That feels like the most universal across time. Oh, really? You caught a bunch of cusks on the red lurker? Interesting. Do you think I could get in a 50 kilo poor beagle on this setup? I don't think I could. 36 liter. How much line do we have on? Oh, we've got 600 meters of line on. Maybe. 
I don't know. I would take a 20 kilo poor beagle. You got a 35 cod. Nice. Let me know how it goes, Blunty. Those are, uh, those are big chunky cods for this trip gear. I've never seen the blue lurker. Struggle quite this hard, but maybe I just forget what it's like not having any points, not having any percentages. You were able to land a 58 Halley on the HSV. Five point five safe. Alright, what do y'all think? What should we try here? Let's go with another dapper. If we could find a dapper that's really working well. Do we just try the red dapper maybe? The white was miserable. Um I don't know. I I, I know the dappers have been good for me in the past. And we I don't know. You've had the most luck with the green dapper. Let's see which one that is. Oh, the green, the 04. Okay. I'll try that one next. Right now we're going red dapper. And then we'll try the green. Day one when Norway came out, those white dappers were sick. Like they were so good. Um, But, all right, that's a quick bite. Maybe we'll toss this one one more time. And this is going to be our biggest fish yet. All right, very exciting. We finally found a decent fish here. Might be a flatfish or maybe a cusk. I mean, he just, once he started moving, he was, he was easy. All I see is his underbelly. Oh, it's a cod. That's, oh, sorry. No, it's a haddock. I did not see that correctly. Okay. Yeah, that's by far our best fish yet. Almost 3000 XP. We'll take that. By the way, we are hardly leveling at all. 
Have you changed leader to stronger? No. Is that something you recommend doing on the trip, Oki? Increasing the leader size? We've got 36 kilo leader on. What do you change it to? So you just buy a store-bought one. I mean, because if you're on the trip, you probably can't make leaders yet, according to what level you are. You buy a store-bought one, what size? 60 or 77, and then you just depend on the, the strength of your line instead of the leader. It's probably smart. Uh, Lane says, what's the price on the HSV? I have Narga 8s, and I'm looking for upgrades to handle... Bigger fish and handling carp better. HSV is about 2.5K. Yeah, that's a good point. If you break on a trip to Norway, it's just replaced anyway. That's true. Two eight eight four. There you go, bug. Two eight eight four for the HSV. All right, so far this red dapper, I'm quite pleased. We're gonna to switch to green next. I just haven't done it yet. But, you know, again, just anything with a reasonable bite rate right now is what I'm after. Yeah, that's true, Cross. Good point, if you're using a lure that you purchased yourself and it gets bitten off, it is gone. Okay, another haddock. We're kind of catching haddock on this thing, which I am totally great with. Totally great. Especially since we can't cut up the safe anyway to turn into bait. I'm going to try to take my quick bio break once it's overnight because I'm sure it's going to slow down pretty dramatically overnight anyway. Yeah, I hope we catch eel pout, but without jigging rig and without attractants and all that, I, I just, I think it'll be slow. We'll see. What do y'all think is the best eel pout lure of the choices we have? So, something green. So maybe we keep going with the dapper pilk, but we put on the green one. Well, I wish we could, Oki, but on our, you know, we'll have to do that on our second trip. We did not uh, level up spin fishing before this trip, so we don't have access to uh, jigging yet. Oh yeah, if we could do jigging and foam, then yeah, I would totally be using that probably all the time based on what I'm seeing right now, but certainly at night. But that'll be our second trip. Our second trip will hopefully be all about the handmade foam. Which will be good for this leveling series because I'll show leveling up lure making to handmade foam level and just how cheap and quick that is. And then we'll take advantage of those hand, handmade foams here. You're 90% marine and you still just use foams? Yeah, I don't blame you. They're great. You get a huge variety of fish on them too. All right. We're drifting, aren't we? Yeah. Just let it sit in the bottom layer for a minute. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's like, oh man, sitting in the bottom layer is sometimes the answer. Uh, I think I'm learning things that I would say is important before your trips, both copper and the sea. It's just worth getting yourself situated 
to have the best chance of success. And so yeah, do some spin fishing at Belaya, unlock jigging, um, make enough money to level up your lure making to hand to handmade foam, which should be about 200 silver or so. And um, for copper, level up at least to the point where bottom fishing allows you to do basic carp rigs. And maybe it's worth actually leveling up all the way to being able to do pop-up rigs as well. But if you want to really take advantage of your three trips to both locations, then that's probably, that is the way. However, I'm glad we took early trips just to learn some of this stuff and to see what it's like to try to make it work as best we can without those steps. Hey, this is, um, this is a fish right here. If this is a decent marker size of one of these, if we can get it out of the water, I should say. Okay. Yes. A three kilo thorny skate. I mean, that's 13,000 XP. That is so much more than anything else we've gotten yet. Yeah, worth some money. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on right now. Worth some money and uh, and also just again like we're just we just haven't been catching fish that are worth that much. Okay, so this was interesting. Do a little longer cast and see if you can catch something on the drop. First sorry of the trip. You love catching these, by the way, folks. If you haven't made your trip to um, to Norway yet, you definitely want to be catching those sorries. Which way are we facing? Okay, this is interesting. 13 is like 1,000 gibble and crucians and gibbles at mosquito. That's funny. Perfect for sorry order? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yo, what's up? Welcome back. I was kind of, that's why I was kind of thinking like, it would be nice to get one of those really small lures to see if you could use those to kind of farm smaller fish. But I don't know with what the bite rate's been like, that might not really work either. All right, let's just let it sit in the bottom. Why are we uh, throwing out so far? We haven't been. I've been tossing it right at my feet, but I accidentally cast it a little further one time and we caught a fish on the drop, which just hasn't been happening. Uh, if you've just gotten here, this this is our this is low level fishing here. This is the first trip for this account. Jig with a small hook and small fish. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a good point. If you've got jigging unlocked. Uh, I'm using the dapper right now. We have used the bond as well though. Everything's been pretty slow bite rate so far. Somebody just called a 1.1 kilo F1 on telly. Yeah, it's probably worth trying lane. I, mean, I think that's a great idea. Clip it like 35 and then just max cast it and let it drop all the way sort of diagonal between there to where you are. I don't think that's a bad idea. I'll try that. Sorry, love those tiny fish baits. Yeah.
So you're saying it's harder to get perking going when it's out that far? So you might get more fish on the drop, but you might struggle a little bit more to get perking going? All right. Yeah, what I like about this, I mean, it's not like the best bite rate in the world, but we're not catching like, I mean, we're catching pretty interesting things on this lure. Yo, what's up? Welcome back, Tweebert. Quiet day on the sea? Yes. In every way, a quiet day on the sea thus far. All right, there's another haddock. We're, uh, we're doing the haddock farm. Okay, let's try the Dapper 04. And just to see how it goes, let's do that 35 clip. Let's just see how this looks. I'm curious now. Okay, let's see if it even gets there. Yes, it did. Man, it drops so fast. I just don't think we're going to catch that many fish on the drop when... When we, when we don't have the attractants and stuff to slow down, to slow the drop down. I, I mean, it's like the fish can't even catch it. No wind, usually bad day. It's not moving in the current as much, I guess. Oh yeah, I wasn't worried about scaring the fish at all. No need for seasick pills, exactly. You have to reel 35 meters even if fish bites after 10 meter drop. Yeah, that's true too, Raptor. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I think probably overall it's better to drop it right at your feet like we always do. But I think, you know, <laughs> at this point, we're experiencing such a low bite rate that it's worth, I'm, I'm okay with trying just about anything. Let's do perking a couple more times and let's just let it sit in the bottom. Yeah, calm weather, one lure only, yeah. So you're su suggesting another idea for a low level player if they're planning their trip is try to wait till you've got a little more wind going than what we have on this trip? That's interesting, I would not have thought of that. Five millimeter at least, millimeter? Five meters at least. Yeah, well, we're only doing this for the first couple hours, and then I'll switch to uh, main account. And then there'll be a part two to this trip that I'll probably do off stream, and we'll see what we can get going. And by then, yeah, the wind will probably be different. We'll see. But that's a good a good point. I would not have thought of that, honestly, that one, uh, one thing that could be working ad against us right now is just how calm the current and wind is. Set out a bait rod. Yeah, no, you can't. You only can fish with one rod on the boat. In uh, in RF four, you can only do one rod at a time when you're at sea, unless you're on the shore. You can still do feeder bottom fishing from the shore per normal, but in terms of being out on the boat, it's just one. Hmm. Yeah, it's very slow. I was hoping this green one would do a little better, but...
All right. Uh, let's don't be stubborn here. Let's try a different lure. I want to try to catch one more fish before I take my quick bio break because as it gets later, it'll just be, I think, harder. Um, let's try the 01. I don't think I've ever heard anything about this lure, but let's just try it. So it's a, it's a weird day, so we'll throw in the 01. We're right in the middle of 34. Yeah, it is a couple of weird days for sure. I'm actually, I might rotate to 41, at least check it. Somebody was saying it was pretty active for them. Again, I don't know how advanced they are in sea fishing and what lures they're using, but it might be worth just checking. Forty-one, uh, yo, Maxi Costa, welcome to the stream. Uh, white lurkers most active for me last days. White color, so maybe I should try the white, um, the white dapper again. At least match that color. I don't want to buy more lurkers on this trip, to be honest. Uh, maybe for the next trip, but or for the next half of this trip we'll see but for now i want to try to make some of these lures work that we have somebody's got a really big valsdorfsky tinch and it was on telly are people finding i wonder if it's uh if that's just people going for records or could there be something to that that float fishing is actually a good way to catch those tench? For a second, I was like, man, do I need to remind people that this chat is English only? But I'm not even in our chat. I'm in, I'm in global chat, so... I have no input. Ooh. All right, let's set it, let it sit for a minute. This is what I feared overnight would be like. But, I mean, really, almost everything's been like this. Lindsay says, I feel like float fishing has always been a backseat method, so there could be something to it, and it got buffed. Well, some species like white bream are just better on float than feeders. I just didn't know if that new tench... Uh, you know, could just respond really well to float fishing or something. I have not seen or heard of anything that would indicate that float fishing in general got buffed, but I don't know. Could be wrong. All right, this lure does not seem to be working well. We gave it about an hour and a half. All right, I'm going to take a quick bio break. I'll be right back. And, uh... We gotta, we gotta pick a new lure. Maybe we go with the white, I don't know, overnight? Maybe we put the green back on? I'm not sure, I'll be right back.
Yeah, we may... It may be worth ending this trip a little sooner than I had planned. But, we'll see. Let's try a couple more things and then we'll head down to 41 before we get too drastic. Yo, thanks for the raid, Artemis Wolf. How was your stream? Now I really want to, um, I really want to compare this with a day that's really windy. I'm so uh, interested in that comparison to see if that really makes a noticeable difference. No problem. It was good. Thank you. Hope your stream is going well. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All good. We're trying to make this uh, Norway trip work on a low level account and definitely struggling at the moment. Yeah, that's right. We just don't have the current helping us too much. Uh, Meat says, anyone using medium light match at copper? Thank you, Artemis. Took a long time to get the bite. Winds and waves usually push oxygen in the water, which fish love. Yeah, maybe we'll go try 41. It also looks like people have been doing pretty well. There's a seven kilo fish here at, uh, at Norway. Looks like people have been doing pretty well at the 80 meter, even on beginner setups, but I'm not quite ready to, uh, to embrace, embrace that insanity just yet. All right, we'll do some of the same lures we did when we first got to 34. In other words, we're going to retest the expected lures, and uh, we'll go from there. So now we're down at the 41 meter hole, the other or bank, the other spot I would say that's especially interesting for 
first time uh, salt water fisherman here at Norway on these very basic trip setups especially. So let's see if we can get anything going here. It's a little deeper and there's already a much faster bite, but we'll see. It's a little deeper here and I know other people have been saying they've been having some pretty good fishing down at 41. Normally 34 is your go-to, but for whatever reason, maybe it is the temps and the, and the weather calmness. It's just not doing it today. All right, there's a nice, a nice initial safe. We're up to 2.8% marine fishing. And that's my main concern with how slow it is, is that you wanna level this marine fishing up. You're hoping it will level up a little bit more quickly here in the beginning on your first trip. Yeah, it would be nice to make more silver, but I think the big thing is just leveling that marine fishing up so you have more options down the line. Norway's meant to be good in cold. I, I actually, I would have thought so just because most things seem to be do pretty well in cold, but it doesn't mean it doesn't affect, um, aff affect spots or lures or stuff in ways that, you know, changes things up a little bit. Third trophy at bucket spot. Wow. That's nice. You got 17.1% on your first five days at the 55. Okay, nice. Again, quick bite on the uh, red bond. I like it. Yeah, it's, it is unusual. Like, I don't remember a ton of really super calm days like this <laughs> at Norway. So I think you might be onto something with how this could be affecting. Ooh, there's another fish species we haven't caught yet, the cusk. That's nine out of 10. So this has definitely picked up so far. I don't know if it'll hold up. I don't know if other lures will also feel better. Like will the blue lurker finally feel like a blue lurker here at 41? I don't know. Yeah, and if the reason the bite rate is picking up because it's deeper, maybe you do go to 55 or 80 if the weather is like this. Although it's interesting because I just saw someone post on VK that how well they were doing just like right outside town, but they probably did have a little more advanced setup. All right, so there's 10 different species we've caught. And unfortunately that muscle is not a marker, so it's not gonna benefit us, but it is a species. Didn't know you could fish with corn at sea. Just check the weather for Norway, weather cold, calm streak. Yeah, it is. It is. It's interesting. I almost would like to get out here on my main account and test some things while it's so cold and calm. But um, Adynamics, how's it going? Welcome back. Good for trolling? Now maybe, I, I can't, it's hard for me to imagine that the answer for a low level account is trolling, but yeah, in general, could it be good for trolling? Maybe. At least then you're producing your own movement and not dependent on the current and the regular movement that you get. Somebody just caught a trophy cusk here, which I assume that's what we have on is a small cusk. Yeah, 5.2 cusk, very nice. I mean, we're doing way better here than we were at 34, 100%.
Yeah, same, Dan. You perk with trolling, true. Well, yeah, mostly you perk with trolling, it's true. Yes, I, I agree with that. My experience with trolling is that in general, it slows the bite rate down. And the only benefit is if you are targeting the really big tuna or swordfish or whatever, you're able to catch up with it. Man. Okay. Should have come to 41 from the start, I guess. But I'm glad we had this experience. I mean, I had no idea the difference. I'm like afraid to switch lures, which is silly. I'll switch in a minute and then we can switch back if for some reason this is just the one that's working here. Um, Right. Let's keep that morning bite rate going good. Red this early in the morning, maybe we'll get a surprise uh, spiny or small shark of some sort. We should probably try the red dapper maybe before we go full lurker mode. Trolled for hours, only only had one fish, seven kilo tuna, we'll never try again. I can't say I won't ever try it again. I definitely don't like streaming trolling because it's so slow. And uh, I'd have to be in a certain mood, I guess, to do it. It's like when it pays off, it pays off big, but man, it can be really painful trying to get there. Yeah, and that's the thing. It doesn't feel like AFK fishing if you're uh, having to do all that perking. It's actually, it gets pretty old. Yo, what's up, Andy? Nice. At least we got something here. Oh, thanks, Andy. You're welcome. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Uh, yeah, 41 is actually working a lot better. Oh, this is a nice fish. This is a nice fish. Love to see that. All right, let's try the red dapper before we go lurker. I'm trying to like just test some of these. So 41 is just working infinitely better than 34 was today. Um, yeah, if you're thinking about starting it, so here's the advice that some people have given that I didn't really think about. It might be worth waiting until there's a little bit of wind before start starting your trip. 
I don't know. I haven't tested this enough to say it with confidence, but I think it's a compelling argument that some of why it might be so slow today is because we have such calm, cold weather. So, I mean, that's going to be up to you. Like, how patient do you want to be with this? But if you plan your trip when it's like even windier than it's showing in the next few days, it uh, honestly might be it might be a better trip. So it just depends on, again, like, What's your goal? Are you just doing it for fun? Start getting the experience? Or do you want to try to maximize? Here's my setup, by the way. Welcome to Stream Spooky. Hope you're doing well. But this has definitely picked up. It's definitely gotten better here at 41. We're still going through trying out some different lures to see what feels the best. So far, the red bond actually felt really good. This red dapper, we'll see. To maximize the outcome, I don't know what you need to buy right now, honestly, because this so far, my blue lurker hasn't been working very good. Some people are saying the red lurker or the white lurker might be a better option at the moment. I don't know. The most, the most important thing is maybe just timing the trip based on how the weather's looking and look for a day that's a little bit uh, windier. So much of this fishing has to do with the current and everything moving. And so this really calm, cold weather might be a little rough on some of these um, higher elevation spots that are normally just prime fishing areas. Dapper 150.07. All right, I'll try that next. Oh, we got a bite. Nice. Yeah, I'll try the white dapper. I, I usually would say the white dapper is one of the best dappers, but at 34, at least, it was super slow, but everything was super slow over there. Meat said red lurker is what I bought. I think that's reasonable. Ooh, there's a European hake. First one we've seen of those. That's cool. Okay, so this is the dapper 07. We'll try this real quick before trying the lurker out. Get lure making to foams before taking trip. Foams are just good to skip. Yeah, if you are taking the trip when you have the ability to jig already unlocked, in other words, if you've done spin fishing at Belaya or Quarry or Winding or whatever, and you've unlocked jigging, then probably is worth leveling your lure making. Probably cost a couple hundred silver. Level your level your lure making till you can make hand uh, foam rubber fish and make some of those and use those here. That's not a terrible idea. It's something we'll do in this in this leveling series. We'll do that for our second Norway trip. Wait, what? Fluoro Dapper got me my trophy black rough. Where'd you catch that at, Dan? Can't you put some extras on? Wait, what do you mean? Extra hook and a pearl? I don't think I can put anything extra on at this point. The red lurker at 41. Oh, okay. So maybe red lurker is the way to go. Ooh, it's another hake. Wow. Another hake. That's awesome. Oh, wait, hold on. I have to have auxiliary hooks, action elements. Yeah, so we can't do auxiliary hooks. We can't do action elements. Now, if we had bait harvesting higher, we could attach fillets, and we'll definitely have that for our next trip. But to be able to turn a fillet, uh, fillet of safe, you need to have harvesting baits up to uh, 60%, which is not hard. It's just, you know, it's according to how early you're going to take your trips. What's the best dip for field grass bait? Is there a grassy dip? I can't remember. Is there like a, there is something that we usually put with that, but I can't remember off the top of my head weekend. You don't want to waste your coin. Uh, yeah, I don't want you to waste your coin. Yeah. 
Hey, another safe. Uh oh, I have a message from somebody. Oh, nice. Okay, so this is going to be us testing attaching fillet strips of safe. So this is something you can do even from a low level. If you have your bait harvesting high enough to turn safe into bait, you can turn them into either these strips or small fillets and add them to your setup, uh, which potentially just helps attract, attract a little bit better bite rate or a little bit better fish. Yeah, you can get the cheap knife. That is true. You have to buy the knife. I mean, that's all part of leveling up bait harvesting. But I don't, you don't need the pro knife, right? Yeah, I think the strips are really good. And the fillets are too. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Yeah, pro knife is just for mussels and crabs. That's right. Ooh. All right, we're rocking and rolling now, folks. We've got the white dab on. We've got some strips, some small fillets, and we're about to put the blue lurker on just to see how it's doing. Uh, actually, first, let's try, before we switch off of this one, let's try with a small fillet. I definitely have better bite rate than M-Dog landing bleaks at winding at crazy rate, getting super good at the M-Dog float lift technique. I love it. I love it. That's so good. Why can't you use them anymore? Oh, because Norway's not open to you yet is that what you're saying you're not level 34 yet you've already done your trips and you can't use them until you get back well hopefully you'll be back soon but thank you for sharing them with us that's awesome i don't know who us is it's not like you're collectively sharing them with everyone but we're collectively having this experience so i'm going to go with us Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. One of us. You are now one of us. We are us. I really just want to let it sit for a minute. I call it a trophy sculpin right where we sit. This is the way. Is that is that what this is that what the saying was from uh, that Star Wars show? This is the way, or am I re remembering it wrong? Yeah, Mando. Is that what they said? This is the way. Okay. All right. It's almost blue lurker time. So, I mean, you know, we have limited data data here, but the strip the strip seemed to get us a very quick bite when we threw it in. The small fillet were on the struggle bus a little bit. All right. Ooh, we hope this is a good fish because it is awfully small. This needs to be a whiting, actually.
or a spiny. Yeah, we'll take a one kilo spiny, almost one kilo. Okay, so let's go blue lurker. Oh, nope, 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 nope. And let's keep a small fillet on there and then we'll switch to strip <coughs> after, after this attempt. I have not, wait, what's the new one called? I don't think I've seen it. No, I have not seen any of the Acolyte yet. There's two episodes out. Yeah, it's interesting, like, it's just been a long time since I fished at Norway, where it wasn't immediate bites. And so, like, I almost, with, with this kind of setup, at least, I almost don't know what to do with myself. Um, what did I think about episodes 7 through 9? Alright, you're talking about the movies, 7, 8, 9. I think I like seven, eight, nine better than one, two, three, but not near as much as four, five, six. I need to see seven, eight, nine again. I saw all of them once and I've seen everything else more than once. So it's a little bit of a weird comparison. Um, but the prequels, with uh, Hayden, whatever his name is, and all that. I mean, those were definitely my least favorite. Although, I do think, you know, they were so ridiculed at the time when they came out. And, and in some ways, I think they have aged kind of well. They're not, like, now that you have appropriate expectations for them, they're not as bad as they seemed when they first came out. But, I don't know, they're still pretty silly. What's up, Moy? But wrote like Rogue One to me is was like a really good Star Wars movie. I think this is another place. Yeah, it's small, but it was marker size, so we'll take it. All right, let's go back to strips, and let's but let's keep the lurker on. We'll see if we can't get something go. Why in the world did it cast that far? Let's see if we can't get something going with the lurker. Whole thing about Jedi Sith, they need to train super long to be able to wield the force efficiently. And she just pops those powers like crazy out of nowhere. <sighs> Wait, what does that mean, Dan? Time for pain. I think it's almost time for copper, to be honest.
Time to try for the golden tench. Ooh, that is pain. But you never know. It could be like third fish. Ray's storyline was bad through Star Wars. They trained super hard. Boom picks up Saber and one-on-one -on -one Kylo. Fuju, how's it going? All right, I'm liking this. I'm liking this better bite rate. It kind of seems like at 41, it doesn't matter what lure we use, we're getting a better bite rate than 34, which I am okay with. Darth Jar Jar, holy cow, I've never seen those words put together in the same sentence, and that is terrifying. Hey, it's a cod. Yes, the fillet strips have been good, and 41 has been good, much better than 34, at least with current weather and wind and everything. No, I don't know the Darth Jar Jar theory. I honestly like, I like Star Wars. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Like I, I enjoy the Lord of the Rings books and movies infinitely better than Star Wars, but that's just me. Uh, I actually like Dune a lot better than Star Wars, but again, that goes back to the books. I read a lot of, when I was younger, I read a lot of stuff and so I ended up settling on like Dune was one of my favorite sort of that sci-fi fantasy type stuff. I did read some Star Wars books like uh, Zahn's. I like Timothy Zahn's books a good bit, but I don't know. Like I think Star Wars is fine. I think it's good. I, I just, I probably don't know a lot of things that you all know about Star Wars. You'll need to level up loads to get it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's so important to level up bait harvesting anyway. I just think that um, it's just icing on the cake that one of the benefits is you can use it at the sea to turn safe and uh, mackerel into fillets. I'm sad that Lord of the Rings doesn't have all the wild conspiracy theories, but Tolkien was a better writer and fleshed his world out. <laughs> uh, Dune is like religious science fiction adaptation, kind of like 40K. Interesting. Yeah, the further you go in the Dune books, it definitely feels more and more just like philosophical. But I still like it. I mean, I think Dune, the first Dune is my favorite, but I like all of them. I've lost count how many times I've read Lord of the Rings. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've read it a few times now. Oh, yeah, Tom Bomb Bombadil. Hey, it's a decent cusk. Seven kilo cusk. Love it. We're cruising along. We might actually hit level 16 sometime. Uh, Star Wars, one of the few series with good representation that powers are earned even if you're special. The new one's failed with the special one that has the raw power to be there. New player, you need tips. What's up, Pytum? Long time no see. I always need, need tips. I think the, the, the best tip might be finish your trip when the weather is a little more cooperative. It's going good though. How are you doing? Oh man, look at this bite rate compared to 34. It's awesome. Amazon should make a series just about Gilgalad. That's interesting. Reel in the fish after it takes bait. I'll work on that. I, that takes a while, muscle memory, but I'll work on it. Besides that, it's going good. All right, we're up to 5.7. Yeah.
yeah, I think that uh, I think that's fair. It's I think it's pretty well established that Tolkien was was influenced by his both his um, his faith as well as what was happening in the world with World War and industrialization. I mean, I don't know that we necessarily have to like say that that completely explains it or minimize it to just those things, but those themes are seen there for sure. Of course, I agree, of course. All right, there's a safe. Yeah, and once again, we're just sort of cruising now. I don't know, we'll wrap this trip up before too much longer and head to head to copper, but this is going much better now. Yeah, I'm actually reading my way through Game of Thrones series again. Uh, and this is the first time I've read them since the shows came out. But I had read them a couple times before the shows. But my favorites are Lord of the Rings, Stormlight Archive, and... Um, uh, what's his name? I always can't remember it. It's the one about uh, the name of the wind or whatever. Those are my three favorite series, fictional series, I think. Stormlight's amazing. I, I mean, if Lord of the Rings wasn't so good, it would just be so easy to say that Stormlight Archive is just like my, my favorite, and I just can't imagine another series being that good. But there's Lord of the Rings. I haven't read Aragon, so I don't know. I don't know Aragon. Harry Potter was amazing back in the day. I haven't haven't had the desire to reread that one for some reason, but I loved it back in the day for sure. So good. What is that? Oh, American Place. We have caught a lot of different species. That's one thing I'll say. We have definitely hit the species tour in this trip. Oh, no judgments over Aragorn. Aragon? Not Aragorn. Name of the Wind? Is that what I said? Yeah. Starlight Archive, Name of the Wind. Oh, is that right? Audiobooks are on YouTube. That's cool. Huh. Magic Treehouse. Yes, this is what Norway fishing is supposed to be like. Sorry for that first hour, everyone. Ooh, beautiful.
little mackerel. That's our first mackerel of the day, too. Boog says, David uh, Gimmel wrote some great fantasy stuff. Oh, nice. That was a fat Mac. We'll take that for sure. Got that off the bottom, too. That was not a on the drop Mac. That was off the bottom. Stephen King doesn't know how to end a story. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Back in the day, I read all... I think at the time, there were eight... Seven or eight of those Gunslinger books by King. Those were interesting. It's kind of like, I think, his... His attempt at sort of a ongoing fantasy series. Yeah. You love the gunslinger. Yeah. I, you know, that is a series that I wrote, read in, uh, probably high school, maybe young adult that I've never reread. I reread a lot of things, but I've never reread that one. That could be worth it. I'm sure it would hit me in a much different way at this point in my life than it did as a advanced teenager or young adult, whatever, whichever one it was. The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Wow, that just gave me chills reading that. Is that the end of the first book? So the first book is like a short story. Not really short story, but it was very much shorter, right? <sighs> nice flat fish on the line. Opening sentence to the first book. Okay, awesome. Another cusk. Yeah, we're catching the cusk at 41, but that's okay. We're catching fish. That's what we want. We will take as many cusks as we need to catch. Yeah, we've not stopped catching cusks since we got here, day or night. Ask the game for a refund. I would like a new trip, please. We should have listened to, who was it? I think it was Boog. I apologize if it was someone else, but who, who immediately said, hey, 41's pretty active. <laughs> I should have packed up my stuff and floored it as soon as that comment was made. I'm just so used to 34 being amazing that it was uh, definitely a head scratcher over there. Ooh, it's another nice fish. My goodness. I would say 41 has been like as good as I had hoped Norway would be. Just finished a two hour trip with 84 fish. Wow. That's awesome. And you said red lurker was your main, your main lure, right? One thing I like right now about 41 is we're getting such a variety of fish. And I will say, if you don't have bait harvesting up, and if you don't have these safe strips, I don't think it's going to significantly change your experience. It's just a little icing on the cake thing. Yeah, until I have that experience, something prove me, prove otherwise, that's probably going to be in my head that if it's really cold and absolutely calm, no wind, 34 might be a little suspect. That's true. That's true. If you're in a community, if you're fishing with people, it's very likely that people would be willing to share safe or foam, handmade foam. Okay. So still very difficult to try to target big fish. They just occasionally come when you're targeting the regular stuff at copper. Interesting.
Yeah, that's awesome, Lindsay. It is a little beast. Do you have one as well? It is a little beast. Oh, that's cool. You, you try to call the submarine and the game says, hey, would you like premium? Premium or no sub? No submarine for you. Now we had talked about trying out the uh, the sea map on Fishing Planet today, but I think I want to fish at Copper for a little while first, and then we'll we'll consider that option as we go. I'm not necessarily like dying to play a bunch of Fishing Planet, although I at least want to kind of see what they've done with the ocean map. I think it just be, could be an interesting exercise. Yeah, it's out, Tweeb. It was, it came out right, basically when I started the stream this morning, it had just been activated, it looks like. Another nice safe. Very cool. The packs are 40 and 60. So it's about this, it's pretty much the same price as the uh, Congo map packs. And the difference does involve the boats. Well, the gear might be different too. Actually, there might be a lot of things that are different, but I think the main difference is the nicer boat allows for one more player to be on it and has like two more rod slots. I just don't play Fishing Planet enough to get high, high enough level to be able to go to the new maps. Yeah, I mean, if I, if, if I played Fishing Planet like I played RF4, then I would be plenty high level and I could go anywhere. All right, we hit level 16 on that place, on a little 885 gram place. So at least we hit 16 on this trip. It's funny that when I first started this trip, I was thinking we might hit 20. Maybe by the third trip. <laughs> now, we're not going to take these trips back to back on this series. I'm not sure what the how we're distinguishing this, Dan. I mean... In terms of maps, I think it's the same. You either gotta be high enough level or you gotta purchase 
access, right? Now, it's more expensive over there for map access, for temporary map access. But it's also longer time. I actually have no idea what you're talking about. What type of fishing can you not do without money? I'm not an expert on fishing planet. I may just not understand. It's another cusk. Call of the Anger Angler is uh, is fun, but overall it was pretty disappointing to me. Based on how Call of the Wild the Hunter works, I just I don't know. I guess I had too high of expectations. Now the Angler has gotten better since it's released. They have definitely improved that game. There's a ton more content now, but it's just the fishing mechanic. Everything is just just. The way it works, the way you level up, the way you purchase gear, the progression, it's all a bit disappointing to me. Yes, you can go to the sea. You can go anywhere without DLC. DLC is just shortcuts for people like me that don't play it enough to have high enough level. And most people, what I've heard people say that actually play Fishing Planet is don't buy the DLCs, especially not for gear, because there's better gear available that you purchase with in-game currency. So it's just a shortcut to gear, basically. It doesn't match up with Call of the Wild Hunting. I, I, don't, I agree with that. I, I don't know. I just feel like... It's a little more like arcadey talking about the angler. <clears throat> a little more like um, just like Fishing Planet's a little bit more arcadey, I think, than than RF4 is. Yeah, that's I don't know about in the past. That's not the case. That as far as I know, Dan, you can get better carp gear with in-game money than you can with the carp gear DLC. It's just a question of level. The thing that keeps you from going to carp fish is you're not high enough level potentially. But if you are high enough level, you can not only fish for carp, but you can buy top of the line carp gear out of the store with in-game currency. What I don't like about Fishing Planet in terms of the money situation is I just always found it so punishing at low to mid levels to have to pay for licenses and travel. To me, it's like, that's one thing I like about the way RF4 does it because it's so, it basically makes you feel like if you travel somewhere and pay for that license, you have locked yourself in Again, this is just at low and mid levels. I do think it changes. Over time, the in-game currency is more and more meaningless. But it basically, you feel like, oh, I have got to go fish for however many hours just to, just to break even because of how much it costs for the license and travel. Yes, I think that the value for copper trips and Norway trips, it's like if you want to throw a little real money at a game, it's so inexpensive to take these trips and you get a potentially a decent amount of silver and certainly it progresses you 
So it is both fun and, and it is a shortcut for sure. Yes, Blunty, it's basically, I've got that on my Steam library. It is basically like a single player experience. And it's, it's not a live game in the sense that they're not still working on it. They're not still adding things. But if you're okay with what they have in it, it's less grindy. And it's, like I said, it's more like a single player fishing experience at this point. I think it was disappointing to people who were early adapters of it because there was an impression that it was going to be kept up with, even if it was delayed, it was going to be kept up and all that, but. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can buy permanent access. You just wouldn't have the equipment unless you buy the expensive one might come with equipment. I can't remember how that works. Unlimited access. Yeah. If you want to drop some serious money on the game at a low level and purchase the full package, or even the extended package, but again, that's a lot of money. But yes, if you want to do that, now the basic package, is that ever worth it? It just depends on how what level you are, how much silver you have, because if you do that, you still have to buy the gear. So you'd have to look into what are the level restrictions for the gear you're going to be using and all that. But yeah, like if you want to throw some serious money at the game, like that is an absolute, like you will be fast tracking your leveling experience. You're going to miss out on a ton of, of fishing though. I mean, unless you eventually go back and experience stuff. I, I just don't know. To me, this is such a long-term game. I just, I don't know. That, I don't know if I think that's a great, a great idea, but it is something you could do. Uh, 92 bleaks in 46, 46 minutes. Wow, and two trophies? That's awesome. That is awesome. Being an early adapter to almost any game nowadays is a letdown. True. You won't be high enough skill levels to use the high-end gear if you buy. Wait, you can't use the equipment that comes with the uh, trip? Oh, I didn't think about that, Dan. Grind silver for the basic Norway gear, then perma access. Yeah, just look up, make sure you know what level you have to be to use to use the, the equipment. It's the only thing. You wish qualifications gave some type of reward? Yeah, that'd be cool. Haven't they talked about that being the case in the future, maybe? Can't remember. Oh, that's awesome, Blunty. Okay, good good clarification. So level one can buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you for clarifying that, Blunty. So what Blunty's saying is if you do, if you did do this, the gear it gives you, not for copper, sorry, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about Norwegian Sea. You would be able to use this, even if you were level one, you'd be able to use the equipment it gives you. Cause it's just pilker stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that is crazy. That would be, I mean, what a crazy way to approach this game that would be. All right. Okay. This is another nice fish. We're at three days, three hours. I kind of feel like maybe we should let this be the last fish. Probably another cusk, but that's okay. This is going to be our 45th fish. We've had some decent ones, a lot of different species. We've probably made at least a couple hundred silver. And hopefully I'm underestimating, but we'll see. And then we'll go see how copper's doing. Five, five kilo cusk. I love it. All right, let me uh, let me travel back to town real quick.
All right. Interesting first trip to Norway. I will take it though. It was fun. The second hour, or we didn't quite get the full second hour, I don't think, but uh, we got close. Uh, that was much more fun at the 41 meter. We were actually catching some nice fish and pretty quickly. Um, I'm guessing we did not get any. Oh, we did get the cusk order done. So that's 100 silver. All right, we still have time. Let me just double check. All right, so let's just see what we would have made without the cusk. Oh, we made 629 silver. Okay. Yeah, look at that thorny skate. So we're going to end up at somewhere around 700 silver with the cafe order. Very nice. And these cusk add up. The hakes, the place, and certainly that thorny skate was the the fish of the day. And there was that 5.3 5 haddock. We caught that one early on too. Knew that was going to be a good fish. All right, so first first part of the trip actually goes pretty well, I think. As we now have a cool 757 silver, which is amazing. All right. Let's say bye to YouTube for now. Um, yeah, we'll finish this trip uh, off stream at some point soon. But uh, let's head on over to Copper. 41 did save the day. True.